Hello, Tom McGuire. So I am about just to do a review on John Peterson's newest book, Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life. Now, when I first heard the title of this book, I must admit I was a little bit sceptical. I did just kind of think, 12 more rules for life, come on, what? Surely got 12 rules for life and surely 12 more just sounds a little bit. But I shouldn't have thought that really because it's really good. And I'm not the sort of person to do a standard kind of book review, as those of you who kindly subscribe will know. I just tend to sort of waffle on and talk about what it is I want to talk about. But this is very much about personal development in this channel, so I read as many books as I possibly can. I tend to read roughly somewhere in the region of 100 books a year. Tends to be um, quite a lot of audiobooks in there as well, but but mainly uh, hard hard copies is that what you call it paperbacks whatever but yeah the point is I get through a lot of books um I do that as a way as one way of developing myself so that's part of my personal development I decided to give myself a bit of a kick up the backside when my daughter was born a few years ago um I'm not one of these people who has been kind of saved by Jordan Peterson who is necessarily a kind of rock bottom or anything like that but I am someone who has definitely benefited from his wisdom from his lectures as much as anything, I just really enjoy listening to him. I think his lectures are really interesting. I went to university when I was 22, so I was a few years late. I actually joined the police straight out of school, went into the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Police, which is the first time I've admitted that on this channel. Um, I was 18. I was one of the youngest people in the intake. My dad wanted me to do it. I didn't particularly know what I wanted to do, so I thought, sod it, I'll go and give it a go. Um, did it for a year. Realised before I went in it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Enjoyed it, got a lot of experience there, but then just kind of decided this is not where I want to be in 50 years time or four years time, whatever. Um, so came out and went to uni about a year or two after that. Yeah, I was about 22, so I was a little bit older. Um, and yeah, when you when you get a good lecturer, you get someone who is kind of pulling apart because I do English literature. Um, and when you get lecturers who are talking about kind of Disney films and things like that and pulling them apart and going all postmodernist and whatever it is that they did um, to try and brainwash me, um, it is very interesting. And listening to Jordan Peterson talk about kind of Pinocchio and Sleeping Beauty and all these different things is, is really, really interesting. I just like listening to him. I think he's got a good voice. Yes, he does sound a little bit like Kermit, but what's wrong with that? Kermit's pretty fantastic, isn't he? I watch the Muppet Christmas Carol every year, especially now I've got kids. It's always a good excuse. You know, nothing wrong with that. Um, and this is just a really good book. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed his first one. Um, I listened to his first one on Audible. I've still got it actually on my phone. And I bought the hardback afterwards. Well. Actually, my wife bought it for me for my birthday, actually. Um, so I've now got this one on Audible. I got through it in a couple of days. As soon as it came out, I was there waiting, and I, it wasn't out till about midday, I don't think. I was there like, what's going on? It's the it's the day today, and it's not here. So I, eventually it was there, and I got it. Got through it very quickly, really enjoyed it. Um, but I I was looking forward to kind of reviewing it on, on this channel, really, because I think it is kind of the... It is really what this channel's about, actually. And like I've said a few times before, I started this channel because I wanted to practice my speaking, because I do a lot of public speaking for my business. I'm a social care consultant. And obviously with COVID and stuff, I don't get so much opportunity to do that anymore. So it tends to be over Zoom and things like that. So I find that, but I also find that speaking about the books, talking about the books that I've read, talking about it kind of helps crystallise it in your brain, I suppose, in a way. And also I want to leave some honest reviews to my kids as well. So when my kids are older, I kind of want them to have an idea of the stuff that I read and the things that influenced me. And then I want them to kind of know my opinion on, on them as well. So I'm 100% honest in my reviews. I'm pretty thick-skinned. I'm not really too worried, and forgive me if I sound arrogant, but I'm not too worried if I offend anyone particularly. That's just kind of life, and I just say it as I feel it, really, um, rightly or wrongly. And yeah, so here's my opinion on this book. It gets better as it goes on, I think. Um, that's not to say it doesn't start well. I think it starts really, really well. And there are some bits towards the beginning that I particularly enjoyed, particularly the part about his mm, father-in-law caring for his wife and how how well he, he did that and how much in awe Jordan Peterson was of his father-in-law for doing that so well without complaint, without any bitterness or, or resentment. And that's really important to me because I work in social care. I see a lot of people, I speak to a lot of carers day in, day out who are going through absolute hell 
I also cared, helped care for my father-in-law a couple of years ago as he was dying for the last sort of six months of his life. Lived with him. Spent a lot of time with him actually. I built the extension that we live in now um, with him. I took four and a half months out of the business to help him do that. So I spent a lot of time with him. He was someone very high in my opinion. Well, still is actually. So yeah, I haven't basically, I have a good idea of what it is to care for someone. So I appreciated that bit. And I fully agree with John Peterson that it absolutely isn't easy at all. And I should imagine for his father-in-law being that much older, um, it must have been really difficult. But anyway, that's not for me to say. It, it, was, it was a really nice bit of the book. But I do think it gets better towards the end. I think as it goes on, one of my favourite chapters, I think, was the one, and I can't remember the exact specific name of it, but it's the chapter where he talks about making at least one room in your house as beautiful as possible. I absolutely love that chapter. I think I kind of knew I would like that chapter before I'd even heard it, just from the title of it. I think there's something about beauty and appreciating the beauty in life that is really, really important. He talks about two of my absolute favourites, Van Gogh and William Blake. I think Van Gogh has done some of the best quotes ever. I absolutely adore his paintings, his artwork. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And William Blake the same, really. I just I studied William Blake at uni and you know, was introduced to him at uni and just absolutely love his stuff. Um... And yeah, I, I liked it when he talks about that sort of stuff because a lot of stuff, you know, we talk so much about, we make out that we don't know everything and that we're aware that we don't know everything and that science only tells us so much. But at the same time, we tend to naturally fall back on our arrogance and kind of believe really that we do know everything. So when it comes to talking about art and stuff that kind of comes more from the soul, I suppose. Or as John Peterson would say, we don't always know where some of these things come from necessarily. We don't always know necessarily where these things come from. That kind of gives me quite a comforting feeling. I feel as though there is more than what we can kind of just put down to science and fact. And it just makes life that much more interesting, doesn't it? When you're a kid, you kind of believe a little bit in magic. I certainly did to a certain extent when I was a kid. And I think it's a shame as we get older that we kind of almost progressively just become kind of more and more cynical and dark and despairing. And I do think that's a lot of what, well, that is a lot of what John Peterson's talking about. He's kind of trying to give us a bit of guidance on how we can avoid becoming bitter, resentful people who are more likely to cause harm and damage to other people, I suppose. And actually, he says at the end of the book, in not so many words, he says that we can go through life being nihilistic and feeling as though there's absolutely no point. But actually, what good does that do other than just cause us to become resentful, bitter, horrible people? It causes us to suffer and it causes the people around us to suffer. And actually, why not kind of hold on to this idea of trying to push the human race forward, trying to make things better, trying to ease suffering as much as possible? And the only way you can do that, really, is to work on yourself and to try to make the best decisions possible and learn how to do that, practice how to do that and just to go through life kind of almost with a certain amount of faith and I don't mean faith necessarily religiously but just faith that what you're doing is worthwhile and actually you are going to die uh, in the end anyway so you might as well get there having done the best you possibly can because actually even from a selfish point of view you'll have a better time doing that anyway and some people might say, well, no, I'll have a better time actually going out and just getting drunk and just being an arse and doing what I want. But you really won't, actually. You'll end up very quickly just feeling like crap and that will end up getting the better of you very quickly. It's very arrogant to think that you can go through life just doing what you want, um, being that shallow and thinking that you're going to be kind of strong enough to kind of... Um, deal with that I suppose and shoulder that it's just not going to happen um there might be some people that do I was watching a documentary on Max Clifford uh the other day the guy who I mean he just comes across as a complete utter narcissist if not a, a psychopath really and he, he just believed that there was someone up there watching over him um that his life was just very charmed he could have whatever woman he wanted as many affairs as he wanted he considered himself to be powerful he was in the media you know he was a big media mogul and he was Power, had that kind of power and all that sort of stuff um which isn't necessarily power to be sniffed at so I don't mean to sneer but I just kind of I was watching it with my wife and I ended up just saying to her I'm just going to turn over because it's just another 
arsehole who has just caused harm with the power that he's got basically and actually he's quite boring um i didn't kind of want to give a i didn't want to kind of give any power to him now that he's kind of gone um and b it genuinely wasn't that interesting anymore it's it's i find it much more interesting to look at people who have kind of transcended themselves and actually taken the difficult path to kind of improve things and that's what i like about jordan peterson i think he he seems to push and push and push to be the best person he possibly can and to help people. And yes, he is benefiting from that. Well, he might not be particularly at the minute because he's really struggling as far as I can tell. But um, he seems to push and push and push to do the best he can. And yes, he will get financially rewarded for that. And yes, I'm sure he is quite an ambitious person. And, and you know, as a lecturer, I, you know, he was writing books and things and he put his things on YouTube. He's, he's started, I think he's tried to start or has started consultancy businesses before, I think. Don't quote me on these things. I'm probably not 100% correct, but it's it's roughly there. Um, so I do think he's definitely an ambitious person. I think he understands what it takes to be successful. Um, but what's wrong with that? Why would you not want to be successful if you possibly can be to provide for your family, to kind of buffer yourself against some of the rubbish things that are likely to happen or probably going to happen in your life? You know, we're all at some point going to need healthcare and if you're lucky enough to live in the UK I say lucky enough but if you're lucky enough to live in the UK then you've got the NHS but actually don't bank on that being around forever I personally one of my ambitions when it comes to making money and becoming financially free is that I can hopefully then pay for private healthcare because I don't believe that the NHS is necessarily going to be there forever lots of people seem to think it will be but I don't really um, and I don't want to get to a stage in my life where I need healthcare and suddenly I I don't have that thing that I've kind of taken for granted my entire life. I want to be in a position where I can look look after myself and my family. So that's my biggest driving factor when it comes to making money. Um, and so far I'm doing okay, but it comes at the cost of sort of a certain amount of hard work, doesn't it? And discipline. And this is what Jordan Peterson and, and other personal development types kind of talk about, um, or influencers, I suppose. When I first started my personal development journey, I was listening a lot to Jim Rohn as well, who's very different to Jordan Peterson, but I, I think he's fantastic. He's quite old school. He's American. He's got a fantastic voice. He's very unique and he's very motivating. You know, he tells it like it is. There's very little political correctness there. Um, and it's just... Yeah, I think people like Jordan Peterson and Jim Rohn, I mentioned the two because they're two of my favourites. I think it's good, no matter what you are doing, if you're reading something else or listening to someone else, occasionally it is good just to listen to these people, to get that bit of of motivation and, and kick, um, just to keep you focused, I think. There are times when I kind of might be reading something or, or listening to something that isn't personal development, or I might be doing something to do with my business or something completely different altogether, and I might have a day where I'm feeling a little bit down, potentially, struggling a bit more than normal, maybe. And I think to myself, right, OK, listen to something on YouTube. I'll put something motivating on. And it does just pick you up and, and give you that and just remind you that actually, OK, yeah, yeah, I can do that, actually, because he's saying so. And if he can do it, then why can't I give it a good go? Um, but yeah, this 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 book is just really, it's classic I suppose, is that the right thing to say? It's classic Jordan Peterson. Um, it's more again of him. There's a few things in there that I hadn't heard before from him. A lot of it is kind of similar. If you're someone who's listened to all of Jordan Peterson's stuff, but Jordan, Jordan Peterson's stuff, then you might find that there's nothing much new in there. But for me, there was a few kind of fresh bits in there. I like the fact that he quotes stuff from the Bible a few times and he kind of breaks that down, analyzes that a little bit. Um... I like the fact that he talks about his granddaughter and her development, watching her develop, because his granddaughter turns out to be very similar age to my daughter. Um, I've got a young daughter and a young son, both under four. Um, so trying to look after them as well as look after the business during COVID. Yeah, it's quite a laugh at times. Um, but yeah, uh, so I liked, I liked listening to that. I related to, to a lot of the stuff that he said there as well. The story of, I can't remember what it's called now. How frustrating. I'll edit it in afterwards because I'm not doing another take. Um, that was one of my favourite books in school. I love that with Mephistopheles and how he's tempted down. He does a, de makes a, does a deal with the devil. Um, and he talks a lot about that and analyses that a little bit, which is really interesting. It's just really good. It's just, it, it's like 12 rules. It's very different to 12 rules for life, I think, actually. I hadn't given that much thought until this very second, but it is very different. I'm not sure which one I preferred. Now I think of 12 Rules for Life, I do remember it quite fondly, actually. 
Um, but I think they're both they're both fairly equal, really. Uh, it's narrated by John Peterson, and apparently he was narrating it while he was really, really struggling. So he's been really, really struggling recently. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because you can find that out for yourself very easily. There's loads of you, there's interviews and, and podcasts and, and stuff on YouTube. There's loads of information out there. There's the Times interview that he had. That's out there as well. I listened to that. Um, I, had, I didn't get a chance to read the actual article, article, which is a shame because I do get the Times from time to time, the Times from time to time. Um, and I missed that one, unfortunately. And I saw you had to pay for it online and just on principle, I couldn't be asked, basically. I couldn't be asked to read something that some pompous journalist bullshitter had basically made up about someone that I have quite a lot of time and respect for, basically, get some of my tits. But anyway... Um, so there's there's lots of very interesting stuff out there. I don't need to go over all of it. For me, it's just I related personally to a, some of the things that he was saying in, in the book. I really liked that. And maybe that's my ego speaking, but I did like that. Um, other people will like those things as well, I have no doubt. The message is just really strong, inspiring, motivating as usual. And I, for one, I'm just really grateful that he's back doing this stuff. And I really hope he gets better because I, I heard him say the other day in one of his interviews that he's functioning at about 5% by his reckoning at the minute, which isn't very good. And although he looks quite well and he's talking quite confidently and stuff, you can tell he's not got his usual kind of um, strength and vigour, which is a bit upsetting to see. But I'm hoping, obviously, that he um, he gets better as soon as possible. But yeah, just really grateful to have this book. I, I did actually, it sounds a bit sad to say, but I did miss him quite badly, actually, because, you know, I was looking on YouTube and stuff and it's like, God, when's there going to be something? When's he going to come back? When's he going to put something out there again? This one's from last year. So, and you kind of start to think, God, you know, but um, yeah, there's an interview as well. I've got to say him between him and De is it Dennis Prager, Prager U, I think. Um, which I personally absolutely love. I've listened to it like four or five times, which is a bit sad. It's about an hour long, but I just really enjoyed it. I, I did a video actually, probably about a year ago now, actually, on why I like that quite, why I like that so much. Um, he's talking about kind of naivety, which he also talks about in this book, and the dangers dangers of being naive, and how we need to kind of brace ourselves for you know human nature and what life is like he or what life is going to throw at us. Um, but I just found that interview really, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought that was kind of, for me, that was Jordan Peterson at his, at his best in some ways. So yeah, thanks very much. Keep liking, keep subscribing. I really enjoyed this book. Uh, go out and buy it, go out and listen to it. Keep supporting Jordan Peterson. I think like anyone, he's not he's not a machine. He's a human being. I think that's what makes him so brilliant. Um, but he needs support the same as anyone else. And I think he's even kind of said that to a certain extent in some of his uh podcasts, videos or what have you. I don't think there's any harm in showing support to someone who's given so much. So thanks very much. Speak again soon. Cheers.